We are in the third epistle or letter that John wrote to the church as we are thinking through the word this week. Third John, only one chapter, so I guess we'll call it chapter one. Let's take a look at this short letter written to the church, kind of on the heels of Second John, perhaps, because it echoes similar themes of uh, the disciples' love for the brothers, the hospitality that we should show. And I want to look at two lessons uh, from these short paragraphs of the letter that we call Third John. We begin in verse 1. The elder, that's John identifying himself, to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Now, Gaius is marked by hospitality. We're going to see that as we look on here. Uh, See his hospitality in verse 5. Beloved, it is a faithful thing you do a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers. Your love that they shared in their testimony. Uh, You do well to send them on their journey. All this language is language of hospitality. Gaius is being commended for his contribution of time, energy, finance, goods to those who were traveling and ministering the gospel to these brothers as they're called we'll see at the end uh well well let's look at it verse seven for they have gone out for the sake of the name the sake of the name. There, there we have an anchor. Their ministry is rooted in, it is defined by the work of Jesus Christ. So they have gone out for the sake of the name, for the sake of making Christ's name great among the nations. So this is the commendation to Gaius. Faithfully pouring out his efforts in love to send them on their journey, them being those who for the sake of the name have gone out. That's the hospitality that Paul, or that John is commending. Now, he goes on to say, uh, beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. Here's a little lesson in prayer. We've talked about this from time to time in the Sunday school hour or in a sermon. Uh, Focusing our prayer on the deeper issues of the soul. It is not that good health and that circumstances all may go well are unimportant or out of bounds for our praying, but more we should see them as windows into the soul. Those circumstances and issues of health are certainly worthy to be prayed over, but we don't always know God's will and what he wants to do in circumstances and in issues of health. But we can be certain of what he wants for the soul, our trust, our faith in him, our Uh, resting in his goodness, our leaning on his promises. And so uh, just a little aside in verse two that helps us think through prayer. Verse three, for I greatly rejoice when the brothers came and testified to your truth as indeed you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Here's a little celebration of discipleship. Paul has poured himself into Gaius. Gaius, whom I love in truth. So the relationship with Gaius is one rooted in truth. It it is based on their mutual commitment to the truth. So John's rejoicing now in verse 3 
is that Gaius has the testimony of being anchored in the truth, walking in the truth. And so this is the great joy to hear that the fruit of those efforts at discipling are bearing fruit. And so it is a faithful thing being done on behalf of those who are speaking on the name for the name of Christ. Now, I want us to come down to our next paragraph, verse 9. I'm going to go to red because we have red flags being waved here. I've written something to the church, but... So in contrast to receiving the word from the apostle, from John, there's the contrast, a different response. But Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us. And not content with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to and puts them out of the church. So a list of grievances against diatrophies, and, and frankly, we can just call them sins. To put himself first, here's pride, does not acknowledge our authority, rebellion. Not that he doesn't know, but he doesn't acknowledge it. He won't accept it. He's talking wicked nonsense, so we add slander. Not content with that, he refused to welcome the brothers. This is a lack of love. And he also stops those who wants to and puts them out of the church, division in the church. So pride, rebellion, slander, unloving, divisive, these are all the manifestations of the one who likes to put himself first. So here's the admonition. In light of what they have seen in Diotrephes, John writes, do not imitate evil, rather imitate good. And now focusing on that good, whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Matthew 7, Jesus says, you will recognize them by their fruits. In this short letter, we recognize Gaius as a beloved servant of God by the fruits of his life, the loving hospitality that he shows. In contrast, Diotrephes likes to put himself first and will not submit to authority. We know something of Diotrephes by the fruits of his life. Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone, verse 12. And from the truth itself. Now, a good testimony from everyone, that's a good name that we hear about in Proverbs. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. But the real benchmark is not just some personal knowledge of a person, but whether that person's life reflects the Christ likeness that is expected of disciples in the scriptures. How does the Bible present the standard of Christ to us so that we can measure our lives by it? Demetrius has a good testimony from everyone. We're grateful for that. But his life measures well according to the description that we find in the Bible. The truth itself approves the life of Demetrius. And so uh, John concludes by saying that he has much that he wants to write, but rather than putting it all down in paper, he wants to see them face to face. Uh, and that's wise at times to do that. Uh, let's, let's conclude with two lessons here. Number one, uh, demonstrate 
love. Demonstrate love in the form of hospitality. Demonstrate love in the form of hospitality. Recognize God's people and love them. Paul, writing in one of his epistles, would call us to this kind of love and hospitality. And he would say, first and foremost, to the household of God, to God's people, but then to all people. So demonstrate love in the form of hospitality. And number two, beware. Beware of pride. Beware of knowing better than everyone else. Beware of feeling frustrated that nobody gets it like you do. Nobody is as spiritual as you. Nobody meets needs like you do. Uh, Diotrephes put himself on a pedestal. And then nobody else measured up to him. So everybody else was wrong so much so that he could speak evil against them and justify it because he was always right. He could put people out of the church that he could cause division because he was right and people should hear him and go his way. Beware of pride. Beware of knowing better than everyone else. So demonstrate love. Beware of pride. Short letter in 3 John, but it's worth our attention. Uh, So come to it. Comb through it. Think through it. Pray through it. And let God speak to you through it. Grace and peace to you.